The story you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring historical characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Jerome Brodos was a serial killer and necrophile who murdered four women in Oregon during the 1960s. He was known as the Lust Killer and the Shoe Fetish Slayer. The youngest of two boys, Brodos had a strained relationship with his overbearing mother. When Jerome was born, his mother was disappointed because she had wanted a girl, not a boy. Because of this, she would ignore him and often belittle him. Jerome discovered a pair of high-heeled shoes in a junkyard when he was five years old, marking the beginning of his fascination with women's footwear. When his mother found him wearing the shoes, she took them away and destroyed them. His fetish for women's shoes continued to grow and he later stole women's underwear from neighboring homes. As a teenager, he would follow the local women and attack them by either choking them or knocking them down, and then he would run away with their shoes. He spent a lot of time in state hospitals and psychotherapy throughout his teens. His disturbing behaviors escalated when he was 17. He threatened a teenage girl with a knife and forced her to take off her clothes. Jerome then took photos of her naked body. When this was discovered, he was sent to Oregon State Hospital and remained in the psychiatric ward for nine months. The assessments found that his fetish and sexual fantasies all revolved around thoughts of revenge and hatred towards his mother and of women generally. Despite all this going on, Jerome was able to graduate from high school and he trained to be an electronics technician. After he married in 1961, he and his wife moved to Portland, Oregon and settled down. But he began to complain about having migraines and blackouts. To relieve his symptoms, he would prowl the streets at night and steal daisy underwear and shoes. The first of the three women whose deaths were linked to Jerome Brodos was Jen Susan Whitney, a 23-year-old from Mackinville, who was last seen in Eugene on November 25, 1968. Jen Whitney was driving home for Thanksgiving when her car broke down. Brodos saw her and stopped to offer her help. Instead, he strangled her in his car and had sexual relations with her dead body. Brodos bought Whitney's body into his workshop and dressed and posed it for photographs. Her car was found later abandoned at a rest area along Interstate 5 between Salem and Albany. The killing escalated the following year. Brodos abducted 19-year-old Oregon State University student Karen Spinker from a parking garage in downtown Salem in March. Taking her to his home, he sexually assaulted her and strangled her to death. Brodos also removed both of her breasts after her death. Only four weeks later, he struck again. The victim this time was 22-year-old Linda Saley. He kidnapped her from a shopping center and brought her back to his home to continue his murderous spree. Saley's car was discovered at Portland's Lloyd Center in April 1969, where she had gone to buy a birthday present for her boyfriend. A few weeks later, Saley's body was discovered in the Long Tom River. Her corpse had been weighed down by a car part. Police working the case noted the unusual knot on the nylon rope used to tie the body to the auto part. Continuing to search the river, police found Sprinker's remains a few days later. They too had been tied to a car part using an unusual knot. Linda Slauson, a young encyclopedia saleswoman, paid a visit to Brodo's home. He pretended to be interested in buying a set, but he had more sinister intentions. Brodos later admitted that he hit her in the head and then strangled her to death. After her death, he kept the body for a time, dressing it up in women's undergarments. Brodos also removed one of her feet so that he could put high-heeled shoes on it from his collection. Later, Brodos dumped the body. Her body was never recovered. Brodos later would be charged with her murder. Jerome abducted women from public places and took them to his home near the Oregon State Hospital. When police searched his home, they found a collection of his photos, 
some showing victims hanging from a pulley. He photographed the women as they died and after their deaths. He dressed their bodies in lingerie and had sex with them. He then cut off body parts. It was later revealed in an affidavit authorizing a search of Jerome Salem home that the wires were identical to the wire used to tie the victims to the car parts was found inside the residence, along with photos of nude and clothed women, women's clothes and lists of women's names, addresses, and phone numbers. There were also notes on all sororities and women's living organizations at Oregon State. Some women on the list reportedly told police they received phone calls from a man claiming to be a Vietnam veteran and said he was lonely. Some said they even dated the man. At the time of his arrest, Jerome was married and the father of two. Some of his friends described him as a devoted family man who neither drank nor smoked and rarely, if ever, used profanity. Sometimes he posed as a policeman to lure young women into his vehicle using a fake uniform and a badge. Once he had them in his vehicle, he would take them back to his house in Salem and kill them in his garage, all without his wife or children knowing a thing. After a young woman he previously attempted to abduct identified him, the police were able to get a search warrant for his home. There they found a wealth of evidence, including nylon rope and Brodos' photos of the victims. During an interrogation, Brodos admitted to the four murders as well as several other assaults and attempted abductions. He was first charged with the Saley and Sprinker murders. Brodos tried to avoid punishment by claiming he was not guilty by reason of insanity. The mental health experts who examined him, however, determined that he was legally sane. Brodos knew that what he did was wrong and never showed any signs of remorse for his actions. Brodos eventually pled guilty to the murders of Saley, Sprinker, and Whitney. He was never tried for Slauson's murder since nobody had been found. For these crimes, he received three consecutive life sentences with the possibility of parole. His wife divorced him in 1970 and left the state with their two children. She has since changed her name. While he was in prison, Jerome wrote letters to companies selling shoes asking them for copies of their catalogs. He likened the shoe catalogs to pornography in his mind, and he had many of them in his cell. On March 28, 2006, Jerome died as a result of cancer of the liver. At that time, he was the longest-serving inmate of the Oregon Department of Corrections, having served 37 years. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.